If you're looking for a top quality, smaller milling machine, this Precision Matthews PM728 VT could be just the ticket. <laughs> Gavin Gee here from makingwithmetal.com and ultimatereloader.com. In this video, I'm going to talk all about the PM728 VT from Precision Matthews. We're going to talk about feeds, speeds, specs, and details right off the get-go. And then I'm going to walk through the process of uncrating this machine, getting it set up, getting it attached to this optional stand. We'll do some demos. Then, in future videos, I'm going to install the optional DRO kit that you can order with this machine. We're gonna compare it to a conventional knee type larger milling machine like my Precision Matthews PM949 TV and more. So let's get to it. Starting with our executive summary, the PM728 VT is what's commonly referred to as a mill drill. For Z axis movement with a mill drill, the entire head moves vertically and the table stays stationary. This is in direct contrast to a traditional knee milling machine where the head can move in and out along the Y axis, but the table moves up and down to accomplish movement on the Z axis. So with the mill drill, you'll have X axis movement and Y axis movement via the table moving, and then the head moves for Z axis movement, and then you've also got a quill, kind of like what you'd find on a drill press. That you'll typically also find on an e-milling machine like a Bridgeport clone. The Precision Matthews PM949 TV is a great example of a Bridgeport mill clone. This machine is 100% Taiwanese made. That puts it in direct contrast to the quality level that you'd find with a machine that's made in China. It's an extra level of quality. It's an ex extra level of attention to detail. And with this particular machine, we've got a seven inch by 28 inch table. The table movements, I've got these written down here, are 17 and three quarters inches along the X axis, 10 inches along the Y axis, and the head moves a total of 16 inches, and we've got three inches of quill movement. I will note, it's a nice detail. This machine comes with a down feed DRO, quill DRO here, so that you can make down feed movements, lock that in, and it gives you one level of DRO capability without adding an additional DRO kit. I will be adding that additional DRO kit, and as I mentioned, I'll be covering that in the next video. This machine has an R8 spindle taper, and what's great about that is you'll be able to use pretty much any kind of tooling that you would on a conventional Bridgeport style milling machine. The R8 collet system, that spindle taper is the most popular for milling machines and that means that your tooling is going to be prolific. You can get high quality secondhand tooling off of something like eBay and use that on the machine. You can find high quality new equipment. You can get economy new spindle accessories, collets, and so on and so forth. My PM949 TV is also R8 spindle taper, so all of my tooling is interchangeable between the two machines. This machine has a two speed range motor drive system. There's a cover here. You can see the two different steps. I'll demo that a little bit later in the video. That gives you a total range of 70 RPM on the slow side, all the way up to 4,000 RPM on the fast side. This machine has an on off switch here. We can turn on the spindle. We've got an RPM display, which I really like here. You can see I'm on the, uh, I'm on the slow range here. Really nice to have that variable speed. And then we've got the emergency stop switch. So quite a bit of features and functionality. It's got the one shot lube system. It's got 10th inch uh, lead screws along the X and the Y, and that means that your graduations for the dial are in thousands of an inch. So if you're looking for a machine that's high quality, made in Taiwan, but has English lead screws and English graduations on the dials, this machine is definitely 
gonna fit the bill. It's got high quality locks for the different axes. You can very quickly loosen the lock, raise and lower the entire head for that Z axis movement. And you'll see just a very high level of fit and finish and detail, the precision ground table. It's a really, really nice machine. So let's next talk about what it was like getting this out of the crate. We're gonna cover the setup process and then go into more detail with some demos. Let's do this. So here's how things arrived from Precision Matthews. I've got the milling machine in the crate and the stand in the box. And screwed the top of the crate from the pallet. Unwrapped things, got my tools, unbolted the milling machine from the pallet. And here's how things looked as the machine came from Precision Matthews after I got the pallet and crate separated. And here's the contents of the box that the stand came in. And here I am putting the stands together. A whole bunch of nuts, bolts, washers. It's kind of a front panel and a rear panel and then two sections that tie the two together. I did consult with the instructions a couple few times. Nothing too difficult. There's a uh, ventilated panel on one side and then the door on the other side. There's a nice handle that locks it shut as well. I set the milling machine onto the stand with my back hone of forks, but an engine crane will work just fine. Here I am tightening the bolts that secure the milling machine to the stand. The chip tray is actually included with the milling machine. Then I took on final assembly. There's really only two things to do. Attaching the wheels and handles and using some WD-40 to wipe down the preservative. One thing I didn't show in the stand assembly portion of this video is the fact that there's leveling feet that are included with the stand and that helps tremendously when you get it into position and you want to get it level and so that it's not rocking on the floor. Another note, I added a four inch machinist vise. This is nothing special, just an imported unit. Seems to work pretty well. And I also bought a clamping kit. Now, the gotcha with this milling machine is these are 12 millimeter slots here. 12 millimeters is under a half inch. I bought a standard half inch clamping kit that has 3 8 16 bolts. And the note is I just had to remove a little bit of material from the width of the fat portion of the T and the narrow portion of the T. At that point, the studs have no problem with clearance and you can use all of the parts from the hold down clamping kit. So you can either order a metric set that has the 12 millimeter slot compatible T nuts and other accessories, or you have a milling machine, you might as well just modify a half inch kit. Okay, on to some demos. Here's what I'm thinking for demos. We're gonna start with some drilling, then use an end mill, and then use a face mill. And for the PM728 VT, the suggested capacities are a half inch for drilling in steel, one inch for end milling, and three inch for the face mill. And a couple quick notes. First, for safety, you'll notice I've got my wrap safety goggles on. I've got no ring on, I've got no watch on, and I don't have baggy clothing or anything that's gonna get tied up. In the machine, I am planning to do a complete separate milling machine safety video. I've already published one for the metal lathe. Okay, the second thing is, quick disclaimer, this information is for demonstration purposes only. Any of the procedures or techniques that I'm demonstrating here, do not assume that they're safe for you to try. I am not responsible for your safety. Full disclaimer in the video description. Okay, let's do some drilling. So I've already got the milling machine set up with a half inch keyless chuck. If you've never used a keyless chuck, you don't know what you're missing. And I've got uh, 15, 30 seconds. Let me just double check. Yes. This is a drill bit that I have split pointed with the drill doctor because the demo I want to do is approximately a half inch in steel in one pass. And I'm going to tighten that really, really well. So I've got some square steel tubing here. This is just mild steel. I'm gonna open this uh, four inch vise up a little bit. Let me get this close to the point where it's right over. In fact, we've got the steel tubing here so we can kind of go 
right here in. I'm on the low range here. Okay, so we've got about 800 RPM and I'm just gonna use some cutting oil with this as we go through and do this cut. No problem at all. So we're done drilling. What I thought I would do is I would show a speed range change and a tool change so that you can see how all that works. We've got wing nut over here. That's gonna give us access to the spindle area. The milling machine comes with a spindle wrench. I'm gonna put that right on the flats on the spindle. The machine also comes with an 11 millimeter double end combo wrench. And we just need to pop that. We're gonna back the draw bar out. And then if we keep loosening, it's gonna actually pop our spindle accessory. In this case, it's the drill chuck. Remove the drill bit. Continue to withdraw the draw bar. And there we've got our R8 drill chuck. I'm gonna replace that with an R8 3 8 inch collet and we've got a nice carbide four flute end mill here. So I'm gonna insert that into the collet. There's a little trick here where we can see there's a hole in the spindle. If we rotate that to just the right spot, it's gonna give us a good visual reference on where the keyway is. Okay, right there. Okay, so we're just gonna get this drawn. When you draw the collet and even finger tighten it, it's going to typically hold your tool, the end mill in this case, in place. Our 11 millimeter socket up here. Give it a little tight. It doesn't take a whole lot. Okay, now let's do that speed change. So for the speed range change to go from low range to high range, we just need to loosen the two cap screws here. One is the pivot, and then this side here that you can see is the slot. And that's gonna allow us to pivot the motor and then to situate the belt. We wanna get that aligned, very carefully look at the rear pulley there. It's a serpentine belt. Well, serpentine style, it's got the ribs. And then go ahead and tighten both of these cap screws down. Close the cover. Turn the machine on. Okay, now that we're in high range, it's time to get this milling machine set up to do our end milling operation. So I'm gonna remove the stock. It's always great to have a disposable paintbrush nearby. Get the chips out of the milling vise, and we're gonna put this block of aluminum here in place. Okay, that ought to be good. And we're gonna loosen the lock for our Z axis, and we've got our crank over here. Crank it all the way down. Okay, so now we can lock the Z axis again, and we're gonna go in forward here. And one last detail we don't wanna forget is to lock the spindle because we're not using the quill for the drilling type operation. Okay, let's go ahead and do a nice cut here. Very nice. So I removed the 3 8 inch end mill and collet. 
Now we're gonna go for it. We're gonna go for that three inch face milling capacity. And we're gonna see how this is gonna do. This is an AccuSize tool with carbide indexable cutters, inserts, really nice cutting tool. Okay, again, we're gonna tighten, don't need to overdo it. Ready for some face milling. All right, so I'm gonna lower the face mill down into position. We're just gonna take off that last slot that we milled with the end mill. 2700 RPM. Let's see how this is gonna do. Very nice cut. And if we do a final tramming of the machine, we're gonna get an even better result. Definitely didn't slow down the machine at all. And this kind of a tool is great because it gives you such flexibility for milling larger surfaces, face milling, getting a nice flat profile to work with. Love it. There you have it, a walkthrough of the PM728 VT milling machine. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe with notifications because I'm gonna be installing a DRO on this particular machine. I'm gonna be comparing it with my 949TV knee type milling machine, Bridgeport clone. I'm really excited about this machine because for things like stock inletting for my gunsmithing, it's really easy to manipulate the handles. The machine is of reasonable size and that makes it easy to negotiate. Whereas with a larger machine, you actually have to walk around to do different operations with the different control for the different axes. So loving the machine. If you have questions about it, if you wanna share your own experiences, please drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. Until next time, happy machining.